In power supplies too, 3P is used for Raspberry Pi and Hi-Fi Berry Dark Plus, I compared three power supplies in a relatively low quality setting. Now it's time to go up market and listen to what good power supplies do on the Sonora Micro Rendu network audio adapter. The Raspberry Pi offers a very dirty USB signal that, in my honest opinion, is not suited for music reproduction. But combined with a hardboard that provides a proper SPDIF signal and a good power supply, it offers a quality that can be better than the SPDIF signal from a squeeze box touch and thus isn't bad at all. But the Sonora Micro Rendu is of a different class. It only offers USB output, but again when used with a very good power supply, that signal is extremely clean making it easy for the DAC to perform optimally. One power supply often named in combination with the Micro Rendu is the Uptone Audio UltraCaps LPS1. During the review time there even was a delivery delay, luckily I got a sample. The device got its name from a new kind of capacitor, effectively a cross between a storage capacitor and a battery called supercapacitor. It is not suited for high voltages but that is not needed here. A major advantage is that they can deliver current very fast, a lot faster than normal batteries. They also charge faster and are able to hold large loads in small packages. The LPS1 on review here holds 60 farads of supercaps. The acronym LPS stands for Linear Power Supply, but it's not like the other linear power supply in this review in that it needs a DC input voltage rather than a core to the grid. You can use a switching power supply rated at 7.5 volts 2.5 amps, 9 volts 2 amps or 12 volts 1.5 amps. The LPS1 converts that to a clean 3.3, 5 or 7 volts DC. Switching is done with a switch on the back of the unit. A three color LED on the rear indicates the state of the unit. What exactly happens in the LPS1 is not fully clear to me. The board holds an FPGA and a lot of other chips that normally can't be found in a linear power supply. The S-Booster is more like a normal linear power supply, although it contains a lot more than the average linear power supply. To begin with it has an internal voltage selector ranging from 100 volts AC to 240 volts AC, a mains filter, a large toroidal transformer, a discrete rectifier circuit, a voltage regulation on a cooling profile, a switch for the output voltage, six 4700 micro farads capacitors and a power LED. A split current unit is found at the end of the output cable. This is not only an additional filter, it also buffers the power to provide the electronics with current instantly. Of course I used my setup one, using the recent addition of the MQA Able MyTech Brooklyn DA converter fed from another S-Booster power supply and the Cord Hugo running on its internal batteries alternatively. The DACs were connected to the AudioNote Soro SE amplifier modified by AudioMagic, driving the AudioPhysics Scorpio speakers over AudioQuest Castle Rock cable. The interlinks are, were a prototype of the Crystal cable Ultra Diamond and Grim Audio TPM cable. As said, there were some strong opinions on the web and I was not sure about my observations. Thus was this review postponed for a week, just to be sure. This might already give some indication about the outcome of this review. There are differences, but they are small, very small, in my setup anyway. The differences? I would prefer the dynamic behavior of the S-Booster, but the sibilance control of the Ultra Caps. As said, the differences were very small and only when forced I might choose the Ultra Caps over the S Booster since I value sibilance control over dynamic behavior. 
But again, the differences are minute. They both are very good and clean power supplies that I can wholeheartedly recommend. Still, there are some differences of practical nature. The UltraCaps uses a switching mode power supply to get a low DC voltage that feeds the UltraCaps. This poses the risk that the switching circuit pollutes the power lines and or radiate into your audio cables, so you better keep it away from the audio cables and equipment. On the other hand, the UltraCaps has three practical voltages to choose from. 3.5, 5 and 7 volts, as where the S-Booster offers voltages very close together. To feed the micro Rendu, the 5 to 6 volts version is used. Another factor is of physical nature. The Ultra Caps comes in the shape of two small boxes with cables in between, as where the S-Booster is only one box, but it's very large. There also is a small price difference in favour of the S-Booster, although that might differ per country. But which way you choose you're fine, at least when using a stereo like my set of one which costed around 20k in euros. Whether there still is a better power supply out there I don't know, but I'll keep looking and if I find one I will review it. So if you want to stay informed, subscribe to this channel, my newsletter or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you have a question, post it below this video, but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my About Questions video to find out why. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. See the link in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.